At the dawn of this channel, Soch's created a replica of the Bominomicon. Since then, he's been biding his time. Practicing, improving, procrastinating, until he felt ready to use its powers to create the Monoculus. Actually, I was just gonna use polymer clay. Really? No magic? Yeah, that's not really in my budget though. No. Oh, this is why I hate mortals. So this video has been in the works for a long time. I made a poll asking you guys if you wanted me to make it for Halloween, and the results were an overwhelming yes. I even started like 6 months before Halloween to make sure I got it done in time, and that was 2 years ago. <laughs> Originally I tried to make it using air drying clay, but after a certain point I realized some parts would be too fragile to make in that material, so I decided to wait until I found a better way to do it. And that's why the video took so long to make. So I made a ball using Super Sculpey, which then came out of the oven looking deformed because of an air pocket that formed underneath the clay. This time I'm using Super Sculpey Firm, which is a harder clay than regular Super Sculpey, but in my opinion it's easier to work with. As you can see, I used foil to make the armature, then a thin cut of clay, and then I put it into the oven. This is after baking, and it's actually looking pretty good. Before I go ahead and add any other details, I want to sand it down to make it as round as I can. One of the great things about Sculpey is that you can in fact use sandpaper on it and continue to add more details later. It didn't have to be absolutely perfect everywhere, since most of it is being covered in more clay, but I did want to make it as close as I could in the areas that will be open, meaning the back and the front. Next I put on some baking bond and started putting small pieces of clay around what would later become the shape of the eyelid. I tried using a bigger piece at first and just cut out the shape of the eye, but I found this approach to work better. To make the inside of the eyelid I just made a long piece of clay that I fit along the inside of the rim. Then I began to sculpt it into the correct shape. Next I started working on the rectus muscles, because they need to be attached before the skin. I also had to look up the name for all of these parts of the eye, so I'm sorry to all ophthalmologists watching this if I get anything wrong, or if I mispronounce ophthalmologist. Ophthalmo- op op Anyways, I had to go about this a few times because I had trouble getting them the right size and the right shape. It was kind of hard to see from the reference photos. I put some baking bond at the back, then I tried to smudge out the edges of them. Once all three of them were attached, I located the center of the back eye and I drilled a hole in for the optical nerve. I stuck in aluminum wire, cut it down to size and covered it with a cylinder of clay. There are arteries kind of twisted around the optical nerve, and to make those I'm using a different clay called Cos Clay. If you make stuff like this out of Sculpey, it would be pretty fragile and it might break. The cool thing about Cos Clay is that it's an oven-baked polymer clay that's still flexible after baking. The thinner it is, the more flexible it is. I used that clay because there's one piece in the back here that's kind of hanging freely and I didn't want that to easily break. Ironically, I played around with it off-camera too much and still broke it, so um, don't do that. I had to go back and fix that. <laughs> I got the reference photos for this project by a friend of mine who was kind enough to hook me up with some photos from Source Filmmaker. But you have no idea how many rounds of Iodoc they had to play this year to get footage from certain positions because they were too hard to see in the reference photos. This was one of those places. There's a lot going on with the optical nerve itself, there's a lot of veins and stuff, and things are poking in different directions everywhere, 
and it was pretty hard to see from a static image so in that regard it really helped to be able to use in-game footage where you can kind of rewind and kind of see it more in a 3D view if that makes sense. Now we're gonna make the ripped skin that's kind of surrounding everything in the back. This was another bit where I had to look at in-game footage because each of the skin flaps are kind of pointing in different directions and it was hard to tell uh, which direction based on the pictures. To those who play Team Fortress, you know that it's not that easy to sneak behind Monoculus uh, without him noticing and um, it wasn't a very efficient method to get footage, but it worked. I cut out one piece at a time. I tried to bend it in the right shape and then I blended it together with the rest of the skin by just smudging it either with my fingers or with my tools. All the parts are now added and this is upside down. All the parts are now added and I got very lucky because this is all the clay that I had left. At the time of recording, it was out of stock practically on every website that I could find in Sweden and the place I ordered from also had to cancel the order because they ran out of stock. We're gonna get more into that later. All that's left to do now is the detail work, meaning the skin wrinkles and the wounds. There's a piece of missing skin on the left which I kinda just scooped out. I used a combination of a ballpoint tool and my golf club tool most of the time, but if I didn't have reference photos showing exactly where to make these wrinkles, I don't think it would have looked as good. It was starting to look pretty menacing now with all the details in place, meaning it was now time to put it back into the oven. After baking everything seems to be intact and I didn't get attacked by a wasp, so good times were had by all and we can now begin painting. As usual I'm using regular acrylics and I'm starting with the white of the eye. Monoculus in its aggressive form has a very bloodshot look about it. To replicate that I used pink paint and a combination of dry brushing and wiping off watered down paint. I've never been particularly good at painting clean gradients, but after this project I definitely developed at least a rough way of doing it with pretty good results in my opinion. I used a pencil to draw out the veins and filled in the lines using a darker shade of pink. The iris was also somewhat of a challenge, because I think this is the first time I've ever attempted to paint an eye. I started off with a dark brown base, then I used a lighter brown as a texture according to the reference photos I had. I topped it off with a few medium shades along the edges of the brighter ones to sort of blend it out more. To no one's surprise, I used black for the pupil. Now, before I start painting on the skin, I wanted to make the back, just in case I accidentally scrape some paint off. I used the same process to make it more bloodshot, except instead of white, the back is a lot pinker. Playing the game, I can't really say that I've noticed how gross some of the details are here, but when you're trying to really replicate making a realistic eye, um, it really comes together after the painting. Almost everyone I've shown this to while I was making it told me that those parts looked pretty disgusting. I'm gonna make a wooden base for the monoculus to stand on later, so I'll be using a metal rod that I will attach to the underside of the eye to kinda make it look like it's floating. I couldn't record while drilling the hole, so I'll just show you the end result, which is this horrifying popsicle. I continued by adding varnish to the eye to make it look more shiny, then I continued painting the surrounding area. It was a good idea to put down the varnish first, because some parts of it got inside the eyelid, but now I could just paint that over as I went along. I made the skin color using a bit of grayish brown. Crown, if you will. Thank you. 
All the painting is done now and I've added the lingonberry jam splashes all the way around the edges. What's left to do now is adding the final coats of varnish on the back and the fresh lingonberry jam to give it that lovely shine. The varnish smells a lot so I'm painting this in the garage which is why uh, I'm wearing a jacket and it's a pretty weird camera angle. Uh, this is also really hurtful for my legs so I'm gonna cut to when I'm done with this. <laughs> so but it's looking it's looking good. This is more or less where the video would have ended, but about halfway through this project I got a better idea for how I wanted to make the base. Since Monoculus spawns on the control point of Iaduct, I figured it would be cool if I add a control point to the base as well. This also posed a problem because as I mentioned earlier I had almost run out of clay at this point and all websites in my country seemed to be temporarily out of stock. By pure luck I found some in a physical store when I was there to buy something else. So now that we have the clay, how do we make the control point? From playing the map I managed to make out that Monoculus is a bit smaller than the control point, so I grabbed some screenshots and compared the size differences, which I then rescaled to fit my miniature one. My control point would have to be 13.5cm wide, so I proceeded to use some very scientific methods to get the other dimensions for it. I made a paper template and then I got to work. So, I got this done, it didn't crack, I'm very happy, uh, aside from one air bubble there, but I don't think anyone's gonna notice it, which is why I shouldn't have told you. I do have to sand it a bit, but uh, the problem now is, um, it's sort of attached to the oven <laughs> form, so I need to try to pry it, oh, okay, that's pretty easy. Uh, it doesn't look that great underneath, but uh, it doesn't have to. I sanded it down to make it smoother and more symmetrical, and then I added a base coat of bright grey. It looks too clean, so I'm smudging watered down black paint in certain areas and some white along the corners. The bolts are just a dark grey. To paint the control point itself, I more or less used the same gradient technique that I used for the eye. A base coat followed by a darker shade of the same color which I apply with a dry brush. At this size it was however a bit harder to make it look smooth, so I also used a tiny bit of water and then I used paper to wipe it off. My brother was kind enough to set me up with a block of plywood that I could use for the base. I've already spackled and sanded it so it's smooth and ready to go. Before painting it I drilled a hole in the middle so I wouldn't have to do that after I added the control point. I decided to paint it all black because it looks pretty and professional and kinda like the figurines you buy in stores. It felt really good to paint wood after using Sculpey so much. When you use Sculpey you normally have to paint it over and over and over again before the clay stops showing through. Here you can just slap on two coats of paint and you're done. At the moment the pole is a bit too long so I need to crop it down. Thankfully I watched anime before, so cutting steel wasn't really a problem. Here we go, the final steps. Now it's just a matter of super gluing it all in place. I bring you the monoculus! <laughs> <laughs>